Hello guys, so it seems that I have a consistency issue when it comes to publishing and or making and publishing videos, so I apologize for being MIA for four or five months, but I'm back with a video at least, so can't complain now, right? I want to talk about LDAP obfuscation. And if you don't know anything about LDAP, if that is a brand new word for you, go Google LDAP pen testing, offensive security testing, watch some other videos, read some blogs and come back, and then this will make more sense. But essentially, during a pen testing or red teaming engagement, any offensive security engagement where you know, you are typically attacking Active Directory. Uh, interrogating LDAP for information is going to be crucial. Essentially, LDAP contains all the information about the Active Directory from the base all the way down to every user and computer account objects and their permissions to each other and all that juicy information. And in order to find attack paths with tools such as Bloodhound or just in general get information about objects in AD, you are going to query LDAP. Now, in the sort of late... Uh, I don't want to put a time frame on once really, but just in general, you know, in as as defense uh, mechanisms and both from technical level and cultural wise gets more complicated and more sophisticated, uh, we are going to see and we see LDAP detections being made. So you can turn on specific uh, GPOs on or ev sorry event logs on the domain controller, and you can actually start to uh, dump the LDAP queries being sent to the domain controller and then write the text detection rules on them. So if you if you look at tools like Bloodhound.py, which is the Python implementation of the uh, Bloodhound data um, collector. By Durkheim. If you look at the LDAP queries that he uses in that Python tool, uh, there are some very specific ones that look for some very specific values that you can actually then write detection rules for. And then if somebody wants that in your network, you're going to be able to detect that. So as an attacker, our next step then becomes, you know, how can we get around that? How can we keep interrogating LDAP for information without getting caught uh, because we are using some very specific queries? Well, Tools like Maldaptive might be the solution to that. So back at Black Hat 2024, I believe also they presented this at DEF CON, uh, Daniel Bohanan, Bohanan, Daniel Bohanan, wow, I'm already butchering that. And then I'm going to try to say this. So I am butchering this. I am sorry. Maybe I should just say Sabi. I'm going to just say Sabi. Uh, released this great piece of research called Maldaptive. Uh, which is, you know, how they talk about, I think he mentioned somewhere on the lines of like 2,000 hours and counting deep into this where he's essentially understanding LDAP, uh, reconstructing it to the level where he can apply uh, obfuscation to it in a very, very sophisticated way without breaking it uh, using both known and unknown uh, methods that we didn't know even were valid LDAP queries. So they released this close to nine months ago, but they released it partially. So they released a ton of the research. Again, go check out their uh, the, the YouTube videos from their DEF CON and Black Hat Talks on YouTube. But they released most of the research, except the actual PowerShell code that performs the obfuscation. Uh, and they cite the reason being that, well, in, in general, these guys or these two are defenders. Uh, so they don't want to give away something that attackers could potentially use. Yada, yada. It's a whole OPSEC. Or sorry, not the whole OPSEC. It's a, it's a whole offensive sec discussion again, right? Um, but yeah, uh, so cool, right? Uh, they released the research, but not the actual tool. But you know, along and behold comes Arthur, which is located in Brazil, I think, and he writes something called LDAPX, which is a Go tool that sort of works as a middleware. So he will, this Go tool will start a local LDAP service on your attacker machine, and then any LDAP queries that you send to that server will be obfuscated based on the parameters you give it. You can sort of customize the obfuscation you want to apply. You know, do you want to apply it to search queries? Do you want to apply it to to uh, insert or remove queries? Do you want to, to apply it to ba the base DN, the attribute list, the attribute entries, etc.? And then it will actually forward that obfuscated LDAP query onto the service that it's meant to go. So you're basically running LDAPX, you're targeting a domain controller, and then with your tool, with your tool that uses LDAP, such as you know, LDAP search, you point at your local host, and then that will be forwarded onto the domain controller in an obfuscated way. So this is not only a way to easily obfuscate your LDAP queries, in my opinion, it's freaking magic because you really don't have to do much. You can basically take existing tools, modify them a bit so that they successfully point at localhost, uh, but still don't break the, um, the DNS resolution stuff. And, you know, Bob's your uncle. You get the information you want back, but the LDAP queries you ran are obfuscated. So I thought, you know, let's give this a go. Let's demo this in this quick video. I already have LDAPX set up. It's a Go tool, so you can either install the Go dependencies and then use Go install, or you can download the pre-compiled binaries, which is what I did in this case. Uh, so he has a lot of pre-compiled binaries for different platforms here. 
and then um, you essentially just run it. You run it as sudo. That's kind of important because it has to be able to uh, open that port 389. And then I'm just going to give it absolutely nothing for now. Looks something like this. So now it's going to perform some sort of base layer obfuscation because we haven't given it like specific uh, or the arguments and, and told it specifically what attributes we would like to obfuscate. And then we can use something like... I'm cheating here, by the way, uh, LDAP search. Before we do that, um, to make the authentication work, especially if you're using Kerber or something like that, uh, you have to update your host file. So in this LDAP search query that I just removed, I am targeting legit corp DC01. And for that to work, I obviously have to update my host file to point at localhost instead of the actual um, uh, IP of the domain controller. So I have a... Um, Active Directory Lab running in Hyper-V right now, which this VM can reach, but I'm pointing any reference to my domain controller to a DC or to, to the local IP instead of the DC IP, and then LDAP is gonna, LDAP X is gonna pick up that LDAP query and then point it over to the actual domain controller IP. So just as a prerequisite, so you know that. And then we should be able to just run the LDAP queries and watch the output come and the input being obfuscated. So right now it didn't do any obfuscation because we haven't given it any uh, attributes to, or we haven't told it what to obfuscate, but it does work. We're seeing a binary request come in, we're seeing an LDAP query, and then it's sending that back to the main controller and I get my data back on the uh, right-hand side here. So let's actually enable some obfuscation. So I have this command somewhere. There we go. And if you wanna know what this means, just check out the documentation here. So F is going to be for uh, filter middleware. So that's just general filters, I guess. Okay, so that's the LDAP filter, the actual uh, filtering of it. And if you go down to finding filter, you can see, okay, the C is going to give you case obfuscation, so randomized character cases. So input can be, where, doesn't it show the output? That's kind of dumb if it doesn't. Uh, I'm going to bet you this readme has more stuff on the right here that we can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, this is GitHub readme owning me right now. So the input would be something like John and the output would be John. So it randomizes the cases. And then you can apply something like, oh, this is annoying. Let's go, just go down then. <laughs> so then we can apply another type of filter. Let's say we want to perform, add the filter called names to N, uh, ANR, which changes the attributes in the NAR set to NAR. Okay, so apparently instead of using name, you could just use NAR. Interesting. And then prepend zeros. Turns out you can add zeros to values. LDAP accepts that. Uh, X converts equally to extensible match. Okay, so there's a lot of obfuscation layers you can add here. I'm just using this from an example. And let's see. Oh, let's see here how this LDAP query looks when it goes out. So, wait, did I do something wrong here now? Or. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's look for something specific here. We need to filter on something or it won't work, right? So let's do uh, object class equals user. Okay, so we need, to, we need to give it some more to filter on, I think. So can we do some account name IT admin? Okay, still not filtering. Interesting, I literally just had this work, but this is the fun, right? There we go, okay, so. I did something wrong. I think I ran the command without the arguments, but now we can see that this is the incoming LDAP query coming in. This, these are the obfuscations or middleware we are applying to it, and this is the output. So yes, this looks absolutely horrible. And any human looking at LDAP queries might look at this and be like, what is this garbage, right? But if there's, if there's a very specific LDAP query that we are using, let's say, I think, let me pull up an LDAP Pentest cheat sheet here. I think the one we use for, uh, let me actually find some, some good examples here. Talking about evasion, did you guys know that you can get 5% off the entire Balliskit software stack using code FLANK25? Mm -hmm. So I've talked about Balliskit before, they're a big sponsor of this channel, so go check that out. If you're, if you're in need for any sort of payload evasion and you don't want to put the time and effort and money down to research your own stuff, check out their extant products shellcode pack. 
uh, as well as macro pack and now also for max they have something called darwin ops will, which will help you wrap and deliver payloads onto the mac platform which is super interesting uh and honestly yeah so take a look check out that guys again thank 24 to get five percent discount on this entire software stack okay so i have one very specific out of career here that is used to pull spns right so this would typically be used in like a pre precursor to a Kerberos attack. Oh wow, burping, sorry guys. Let's do that. And let's see what that looks like. So that ends up looking like this, which is way more unreadable and is probably going to break detections looking at this specifically, right? Because it prepends a bunch of zeros in this case. So I think this is pretty cool. But there's another thing here that I think is even more cool. Cooler? Is that a word? I don't care. So um i actually reached out to arthur like before christmas or so late december 2004 and i i was like hey this is super sick stuff but uh how would you use this from an agent's perspective because like in from red team in scenario where this is also very usable or very would be very convenient uh we have an agent running on a compromised machine how do i use ldap x with ldap search through that because we're targeting localhost and then we're supposed to be forwarding lab x and then my initial thought was hey i could just put lab x in front of proxy chains but then i remembered that uh, proxy chains the technique that it uses to hook network queries doesn't work on go the go library uh, so that won't work so he actually did me a solid and just implemented socks in this tool so if you go back to the command menu here stop it and look at help you can actually see that we have an option to add socks so socks proxy addressing so we could through our agent through ldapx originating from a lab search obfuscate our lab queries and it doesn't stop here we could even use tools such as you know fully automated tools such as uh, bloodhandled pi and just reconfigure it to target localhost instead of uh, the actual domain controller and then make sure lab x targets the domain controller through a sox proxy and then we would essentially obfuscate every query used by bloodhound.py so i think this is super good super interesting stuff obviously um uh, uh arthur has been very specific in obviously uh why am i saying obviously obviously 10 times here what i'm trying to say is that he made sure to credit the original uh uh, researchers uh, like uh, Daniel and uh, oh, I'm gonna Sab Sab Sub Sab wasn't that the name? Uh, Sabi. So he he made sure to credit both Daniel and Sabi. They are the uh, original sort of uh, discovery finders in terms of research, and he based it on this and then took it a step further to actually make this really usable in from an attacker's perspective. So ho hopefully you found this interesting. Like, click, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. I appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one.